Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome back to Your Finance TV. Every Friday, we talk with Jay Pulaski to go through his weekly musings. How are you, Jay? Hey, happy Friday, Scott, right? The start of the summer. Good things come to those who wait, buddy. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a great long weekend here in the US for Memorial Day. Uh, looking forward to spending some time with the family, and the weather looks great here on the East Coast as well. Indeed. All right. The title for your musings this week is really, like, I'm very fortunate that I get them a little bit earlier than everyone else and so forth. And I've read the title. And ever since I've read the title of Patience, I've had Guns and Roses Patience going through my head. <laughs> now, I'm not, listen, I know you're a little bit more old school music, so hopefully you do know who Guns and Roses are, but talk, talk to me about the title of Patience. Well, I'll talk about Patience, but at some point when we get a beer, let me tell you the story of uh, my hotel stay with both Guns N' Roses and Mikhail Gorbachev in Santiago, Chile. So keep that, that one. That sounds Pile amazing. That, that actually sounds you. more like a video than a beer. Yeah. <laughs> when you juxtapose Axl Rose with Mikhail Gorbachev's bodyguards, just imagine what that looks like <laughs> in an elevator. Uh, boy, good old days, yes. So thank you for that, you know, that reminder. Um, but patience, I mean, it just struck me, right? I mean, we're waiting around for this debt ceiling. Everybody knows it's going to get done. The markets aren't concerned at all. Look at the VIX. Look at the move index. You know, the papers are full of it, right? Every news station is full of it, but it's just droning on. And then it's, it, it's a, an addition to the curtain of FUD, right? Our famous fear, uncertainty, and doubt curtain that has been kind of obscuring the bright future that we think is, is, is playing out. And when I thought about it a little bit more, it struck me that both bulls and bears have had to display patience uh, over the last you know couple of weeks, last couple of months, right? So if you're a bull, um, you've had to display patience because things haven't worked out fully. I mean, we've been in the bullish camp, but you know the, the offset for us at least is, hey, Global equities are up 10% or so year to date, which if you annualize that, it's going to make this a great year. So not too bad for the bulls. The bears have had to be patient because that recession just doesn't seem to happen, right? I mean, a year ago was when actually the drumbeat of recession, uh, at least according to uh, company earnings re results, the drumbeat of recession was the highest in Q2 2022. It's down by a half in Q1 2023 uh, earnings calls. So the recession that the bears have been looking for still just is, you know, is not happening. So they have to be patient. And it was interesting this week to notice that I think some folks are getting a little frustrated, right? Because we had three, at least that I saw, sell side strategists boost their S&P number at Citi, at, um, at uh, Morgan Stanley, and who was the third? Where did I reference it? Um, Maybe uh, Bank of America? Bank of America, thank you, sir, yes. So Citi, Bank of America, and Morgan Stanley Investments, not the famous Mike Wilson, but Morgan Stanley Investments, all raised their 2023 year-end target for the S&P. So patience, people, patience, it's a virtue. <laughs> well, listen, the, the biggest story in the market this week has been NVIDIA. No doubt about that. Um, we, we host and produce a show for Hub.com and we, every single week there's people asking questions about NVIDIA. It's an amazing performance. The stock was up nearly 25% yesterday. We we're recording this around lunchtime on Friday. The stock's up again. Last week, like you had like some crazy guests uh, hosting you, M Medi. And you talked about rotation uh, and like, talk that, was to you, like you spin, think... that was just to spin Marty around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the rotation side of it, like on a move like that, like are you still thinking you're going to see more rotation or is the love for tech going to be like what everyone sticks to? Like everyone's talking about there's only like 10, 12, 15 stocks that are really taking the market higher. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a fan of that argument, right? If you look at equal weighted NASDAQ, it's up about 18%. Okay, so the regular NASDAQ's up 20 plus, but you know, equal weighted 
meaning you know lots of stocks lots of tech doing doing quite well is up i don't know i mean that was 17 was before nvidia so i'm sure that equal weighted uh performance is up plus the other thing is we've talked about you know one of the rotations was from the u.s to the rest of the world right there are there are markets breaking out all over the world um whether you want to look at mexico whether you want to look at japan um there are multiple markets whether you want to look at Germany and Europe. I mean, Europe really led the way, right? Uh, but, you know, the idea that only a handful of tech stocks are doing anything for global equities is just completely, uh, I believe, completely misplaced. Misplaced in the U.S. and definitely misplaced when you look at global equities, as we do here at PPW Advisory. So, look, your, your point's very valid, right? And we, we've, we're we on the AI train. We, we're believers in it. We're playing it through the semiconductor space, which we see as kind of the pick and shovel uh, for uh, the AI age. And uh, importantly, we think this is one of the things that's caused some of these sell side strategists to kind of throw in the towel, right? Because the S&P has been in a very tight trading range. Carter Worth, who is one of the more respected technicians out there, has said uh, that it's the tightest trading range that he's seen in five years. And he expects it to break down. Now, this was pre-NVIDIA. He expects it to break down. We, of course, have been on the on the case of the markets breaking out and up uh, to, to new highs. And so uh, we're really thinking about the rotation. And the rotation here, as a reminder to folks who may have missed Madi and I last week, while you were out, I think, was it swinging the little stick or something? What, uh, what I was, I was, I was swinging the golf sticks. So I, I did a decent job of it for about nine holes, and the rest of it was terrible. <laughs> Sounds like my portfolio. You know, you look at part of it; it looks pretty darn good. Then you're like, "Whoa, what's that over there?" Um, <laughs> so the rotation, right? Is our view is that big tech by itself can't really take the whole S and P higher as we expect it to go. So we are looking for a rotation. Big tech takes a rest. Look, this NVIDIA thing, by definition, not going to move 25% a day every day. So at some point here, pretty overbought to take a rest and hand the baton off to the other segments of the stock market, which have not been doing well. And that's the rotation we're talking about. What is going to kick off the rotation, we believe, is the June Fed meeting not because they're going to go on hold as we expect them to do, but more importantly, because we expect the Fed to also increase their 2023 and 2024 GDP estimates, which they tend, which is what happens in June, they update their economic forecast. This update is gonna be an increase in growth estimates and growth expectations. We think that's gonna kind of put the nail in the coffin of the recession camp it validates our middle path uh, thesis, which we've been discussing for well over a year, right? Falling inflation, rising growth. The Fed is going to validate that in June. And we think that is going to force a lot of that cash off the sidelines, more sell-side strategies to give up the bear call. Uh, and that money will take us through the 4,200 level, which I think we're going to get through as soon as the debt ceiling is announced. Uh, we're pressing up against it again today. And then to the 4,300 level, which will mark a new bull market for the S&P, right? 4,300 equals 20% off the October low. New bull market, uh, and that's going to kind of bring the stock market and bring investors along for uh, a better second half, as we have been uh, ex expecting and surmising for uh, most of this year. Now, you'd obviously, we touched on AI there, and it's a hot topic right now. I feel like a lot of companies are putting the title or, or definition of AI in the back end of their company, like in 2017, when people put blockchain on the end of their right. name, and all of a sudden, your valuation jumped by 100%. Uh, it's, you mentioned uh, the McKinsey study in your musings this week. So everyone watching, you should sign up at Pulaski.com to read these musings. That it's a, gives you a great breakdown, but... Jay, just give us a breakdown of what you've, you've done on this and on the McKinsey report as well. Yeah, um, let me finish on the rotation because importantly, I should remind people what's on the other side. So we okay. have a barbell um, in our U.S. equity allocation within our global multi-asset model, which is our 
flagship model. So we have big cap tech uh, with a lot of semiconductor exposure, and then we have cyclicals. So here in the cyclical bucket, we have industrials, we have financials, we have energy, transports, and home builders. So our view is really that the, the three main drags on the U.S. economy over the last year, housing crash, inventory uh, destocking, and big tech layoffs are all kind of over. And we're shifting uh, to a more positive environment where home building is going up, right? New home building was up 4% month over month in April, 12% up year over year. We think we're going from a destocking to an inventory restocking cycle in the second half of the year. That's going to bring the manufacturing PMI in the U.S. back above 50. And then tech, the layoffs in tech are, you know, yesterday's news. Right now we're talking about, you know, tech uh, expansion with AI. And so I think that's those are important things for investors to to understand and to think about and to understand that there is a case to be made for a early cycle growth recovery, not a late cycle recession. And so the McKinsey study you um, you mentioned is, yeah, something we, we talked about here in the musings because it really validates not the immediate turn, but the case that we've been making that the 23 to 25, 26 period, so 2023 to 2025, 2026, is going to be like the second half of the 90s. And the second half of the 90s is starting to pop up as an analog because people are recognizing that that's the last time we had a kind of higher for longer rate structure, right? Where the, remember that back in the 93, 94, the Fed raised rates from 3% to 6%, that yet we didn't have a recession. We had a soft landing in the start of the dot-com boom, which led to five years of very strong equity performance. So now we're shaping up for something similar, right? We've had the, the, the sharpest rate hike cycle we've had it since, uh, you know, since the 80s. So 5% uh, rates. Uh, we're now kind of on hold, we think. And we think there is going to be a soft landing, as we just discussed. And lo and behold, here comes AI. And this is where the McKinsey study comes in. Here comes AI to validate that productivity boost which was manifested in the second half of the 90s as well, the productivity boost from all the tech that came on board in the early 90s. AI is going to impact us much faster because of the speed at which it's being integrated into much of uh, the service economy in, in, in particular. And so McKinsey posits that you're going to have um, a 1% higher inflation rate, which is, again, something we've talked about, right? The Fed validating a high nominal growth world. So 3% inflation, not two, plus two, plus a 2%, uh, sorry, plus 2% uh, real rates equals 4%. I know, know we're getting a little bit uh, uh, off track here, but basically the point is that McKinsey is validating the idea of a higher inflation target that together with uh, a 1% real rate gives you 4% interest rate. So the rate structure we have today is probably going to be the rate structure. People expecting low rates back to the second half of the 2010s, not going to happen. And you have that productivity boost, which takes U.S. real growth up from 1% to 2% to 2 to 3%. And over time, the impact of that in terms of wealth generation is staggering. To give you a number, McKinsey posits $48 trillion higher wealth uh, in the 2023 to 2030 period in the US under that scenario versus a stagnation scenario. So to kind of sum all that up, we're starting to think and getting some validation from others like McKinsey that this coming, these next couple of years are potentially going to be like the second half of the 1990s, where from 94 to 99, U.S. stocks average 25% per annum returns, which obviously nobody, probably not even us, are positioned for uh, at the moment. But that 
that kind of uh, potential is starting to get validated and AI is an important component of that productivity boost, which allows for the higher growth without sharply higher inflation, which in turn allows the Fed to accept a slightly higher inflation target than the 2% target they've had for the last decade or so. Well, thanks for that, Jay. Listen, a lot to take in going into a beautiful long weekend, which I know you're ready for and I'm ready for. I'm sure the viewers are as well. A lot better. Looking forward to what happens in the market the next couple of weeks, and let's see if we get a change one way or another. Indeed. Well, uh, I think we are. Uh, we're going to break up and out. The June meeting for the Fed is key, uh, and we're positioned for it both in that big tech and the cyclical exposure we have in the equities, as well as our non-U.S. equity performance. But you're right, Scott. We've, we've probably taken up enough time. Uh, one of the last things between the folks who are watching and the start of summer, uh, maybe this video. So thank you for your patience and have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend and a great start to the summer. Thanks, Jay. And for everyone else out there, good luck investing.